I want to talk to the Trump supporters for a minute. I don't know who you are, and I don't know why you like this guy. He's a race-baiting, xenophobic, religious bigot. He doesn't represent my party. He doesn't represent the values that the men and women who wear the uniform are fighting for. There's something about Trump. There's a dark side, and there's some magic there. And what I'm trying to do is just harness the magic. He could make the Republican Party something that nobody else I know could make it. It could make it bigger. He could make it stronger. Hi again, everyone. It's 5 o'clock in New York. That evolution, or devolution, should we say, of the Republican Party is seen clearly through one Lindsey Graham. This is why, as columnist Robert Kagan writes in a new harrowing op-ed in the Washington Post, we need to stop worrying about an upcoming constitutional crisis. Why? Because it's already here. Kagan lays out in great detail the threat the cult of personality around Trump creates for this country right now. How Trump supporters believe not the party, not the policy, but the man himself is the answer to all their problems. And how in Washington, party loyalty now comes before all else. About Trump's party, Kagan writes this, quote, the Republican Party today is a zombie party. Its leaders go through the motions of governing in pursuit of traditional Republican goals, wrestling over infrastructure spending and foreign policy, even as real power in the party has leached away to Trump. Let's take the news just today. Republicans so full of lies and desperation to appease the twice impeached ex-president launched a months-long sham audit in Maricopa County, Arizona. Guess what? It not only confirmed that President Joe Biden won the election there, it found that he did so by an even slightly larger margin. How's that? Today, there's also the news that the select committee investigating January 6th has issued its first subpoenas. But that fateful day, the day in which our democracy was under attack and elected officials, including Mike Pence's lives were threatened, is viewed by Trump supporters as a good thing, a display of patriotism. Republicans in Congress have downplayed or denied what happened that day for political gain. Which brings us back to that somber warning from Kagan, who writes this, quote, The U.S. is heading into its greatest political and constitutional crisis since the Civil War, with a reasonable chance over the next three to four years of incidents of mass violence, a breakdown of federal authority, and the division of the country into warring red and blue enclaves. The warning signs may be obscured by the distractions of politics, the pandemic, the economy and global crises, and by wishful thinking and denial. But about these things, there should be no doubt. First, Donald Trump will be the Republican candidate for president in 2024. And second, Trump and his Republican allies are actively preparing to ensure his victory by whatever means necessary. It is an effort happening in plain sight as we witness state legislatures all across this country racing to pass restrictive voting law after restrictive voting law, like in Texas, where 24-hour and drive through voting where there was no fraud, not even Republicans found any, have been banned. They're illegal now. And in Georgia, again, there was no fraud, but it is now harder there to cast a mail-in ballot. There was no fraud with mail-in ballots. Partisan legislatures now wield more power over election results. All of this setting the stage for more chaos. If only the federal government would act on that. Kagan writes this, quote, We are already in a constitutional crisis. The destruction of democracy might not come until November 2024, but critical steps in that direction are happening now. In a little more than a year, it may become impossible to pass legislation to protect the electoral process in 2024. Now, it is impossible only because anti-Trump Republicans or even some Democrats refuse to tinker with the filibuster. It is impossible because despite all that has happened, some people still wish to be good Republicans, even as they oppose Trump. These decisions will not wear well as the nation tumbles into full-blown crisis. And that is where we begin this hour with some of our favorite reporters and friends. Matt Dowd is here, political strategist and founder of Country Over Party. Also joining us, Melissa Murray, law professor at NYU and an MSNBC contributor. And Kurt Anderson joins us, co-creator and former host of WNYC Studio 360, now author of the books Fantasyland and Evil Geniuses. Uh, I want to start with you, Matt Dowd, because every word of this is something you've said on this program. Your thoughts. 
Well, I, 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 agree, I agree almost completely with what was said in that column and what was laid out. I, I actually think today that our democracy is broken. And I think the evidence of a broken democracy goes back to 2016, the election result, the fact that Donald Trump got into the Oval Office and was commander in chief of this country and there were no guardrails in place that didn't that allowed that to happen that didn't prevent that from happening in this the only part of that column that I'll dispute is that it seems to seed sort of power in Donald Trump and I I take a broader look at this the problem is that it's like Animal House the movie Animal House where the frat that's out of control is now in charge of the campus and what it used to be there were elements in both political parties that were you you were not good in the democratic party for many years in the republican party for many years but there was a system in place so they didn't hold power and you could calm those down and all the things that abraham lincoln's talked about and george washington's talked about this sort of emotional by emotional partisanship and all that could be calmed down that was the sort of design of the system uh to do that but now is the mob has been let loose the mob has been let loose. It's what's happened in the Republican Party. And there's no leader in the Republican Party, or I almost would say the unicorn leaders in the Republican Party are anybody trying to call making a warning to this, to, to speak to them, to speak truth to them. And so when you have no leaders of a party speaking truth to the mob, and then you have an inability of some Democrats to understand democracy is at stake. And that's why I, you and I have had this conversation about the filibuster. I don't understand why, if you if you believe democracy is at stake and you believe democracy is fundamentally broken and you believe we're headed into a crisis, how you can still retain a a something that's not even in the Constitution, a rule, the filibuster, in that, and you're unwilling to give that up in order to save democracy. I, that's the part. I, it's, I, there's a disconnect to me. I mean, if you ask these people that say don't abandon the filibuster, many of them will agree. Yeah, there's a huge problem in democracy. It's a huge. We need to do this. We need to. Do it. Oh, Oh, by the way, don't do the one thing that we could do to try to stave off of this uh, over the long term. And so I completely agree. I think today our democracy is broken. And the reason why we're in the state we are in, in the Senate, in the presidency with Trump, and in, many, and in some of the news media who speaks lies to the public, and in places like here in Texas, where we've the, the Republican leadership is out of control. I mean, completely out of control. The most cruel, craven decisions they're making, not held accountable to it, we're there. We're in that moment today. And the question for all of us is what do we do? What do we do, Matt Dowd? Well, to me, what, what do we do? I mean, my only thing I can think of is one, shows like yours, other panelists speaking the truth, trying to convey that. But that's not enough because we've been trying to do that for four or five years and it hasn't been enough. To me, it's worsened. We've worsened after the 2020 election, which I thought was the most important election in our history. I think 2022, we're going to confront this more than ever. The soul of our country and the elements of our democracy are at stake in 2022. And 2022 is by far way more important than 2020, because what happens if the Republicans win in 2022? It means that everything they've done, January 6th, all the things that have happened, all the way they've conducted themselves in the aftermath of the 2020 election, they're going to be let loose with no reins if they get power back because there's no constraint on them at that point, zero constraint on them at that point. So to me, speak truth, but honestly, vote Democratic from the top to the bottom to try to force the Republicans to change what they're doing.